Story I grew up outside of a relatively small town in Texas, and more importantly, in a haunted house. Well, to be more accurate, on haunted land, and I'd like to tell a few stories as well as my own experiences. Now, a little background which gives some context to why I say land instead of just house. My childhood home sat about 100 yards or a football field off of the Colorado River on about 100 acres of land technically owned by the city. It's a public city park that lays outside of the boundaries of the city. Yeah, it's that kind of ass backwards place, notwithstanding all the other political bullshit you'd expect out of a small southern town. Anyway, back to the actually important information. My father is the live-in park ranger for this city. It's not a bad gig, all things considered. Though in my opinion he could be paid more for being maintenance and authority figure that's on call 24 hours a day, 365 a year. This means if someone gets locked out, if a camping site loses power or has problems, or there is a conflict, someone is knocking at our door, no matter the hour. It's always been this way, since I was about 7 years old, and I'm now 29. He's a tough old man, almost 55 years old, and not all that inclined to share spooky stories of things he's seen, and been told though he does believe in ghosts. He'll try and find the rational explanation for why things happen before he caves, and admits it was a ghost even if my and my mother know well what it is. Now, I give this background because it's important to note that when things go wrong, he's usually the first person on the scene. This includes the time we had some jet skis explode, while a father-daughter were riding them they were fine, thank goodness, alligators roll up on a campsite, personal disagreements, people trying to be sneaky and not pay by showing up after dark, people doing illegal substances or trying to get freaky in the backseat in the rough camping part of the park, and of course being right on the river drownings. For some reason people love to drink and swim, and someone drowns about every three years minimum. We're actually due for another drowning, following the pattern I don't hope people drown, but the memory of the last ones don't seem to stick as long as they should. Anyway, dad is usually the first on the scene, either to try and help the people, or to direct the ambulance and police, and eventually the search for the bodies. Most appear after a day one took three days and mom said that's the only time she's seen dad truly disturbed. It's not a fun part of the job, and dad dreads summer and spring when people start coming out and acting stupid. Please, please, do not drink and swim, and if your kid isn't a strong swimmer, even if they are please put a flotation of some kind on them, if you're swimming in a river or lake, for your sake and everyone else's. So, people drown, sad as it is. That being said, these drownings have led to several spirits that hang around. Our most popular one to be reported is the first man my father helped try and find the body for. He was wearing a white shirt, blue jeans, and was a friendly man by nature. Now I need you to know, I have only seen him once myself after his passing. My mother and my father have both seen him multiple times, and many campers have seen him. One gentleman who likes to fish was out late, close to midnight returned to his car, alone as he'd been all day. He gets his gear in, gets in himself and goes to buckle up after starting his car only to see the smiling figure of the man in the white shirt and jeans in the passenger seat. He leapt out, and when he turned around, saw no one in his car. It's been almost five years, and this fisher no longer comes out by himself if he's staying after dark. Other campers have reported seeing a man sitting at a table, white shirt and jeans, who will see them and raise his hand as if to wave at them. People will go to wave back onto to realize no one is there. My mother used to work early morning shifts 3am to 2pm and she'd see him standing outside of the office on her way to work from time to time. My own experience with him is simple but spooky, I was sitting in the office with a friend one night, 
talking about 1030 my parents now live above the office after Hurricane Harvey. Anyway, we were sitting there, and I see out the window over my friend's shoulder, a figure walk by the window like it was going to walk through the double glass doors of the office. Now I live in a park, meant for camping and visiting. However it's important to note that the park was a close due to our sewer system getting redone, and b it was the middle of the week and most people don't show up then. It was the man in the white shirt and jeans, and I knew that he was coming to buy something from the office I was spooked, who wouldn't be and my friend and I retreated upstairs rapidly. He's never been threatening, and I'm sort of glad the flood didn't take him away. However, even with him on the land, there are worse things that are here. My childhood home which, I must admit, I'm sort of still grieving and grateful I cannot live in again was destroyed in Hurricane Harvey. It had two feet of water in it, and emotionally devastated our family. There is something that still lives in that husk, now used for storage, and I hate it. Growing up, my bedroom was used during the day by myself, and never at night. When I was little, I often had night terrors that had me shrieking for my mother, and sleeping on the couch instead. She told me that I often said, she has no face, when I was asked why I was crying at night. By time I was nine, the couch in the living room was my bed, and my bedroom helped a cheap futon. The feeling of being watched, of something standing behind you was, and is overwhelming. I hated it. Even when I slept in the living room, I had to have the door to that room shut, as well as the one next to it, the feeling of being stared at was so strong. We had a door to the garage at one end of the living room, and one doorway to the kitchen. The garage door was open during the day, and there was no tangible door to the kitchen. What I saw in these parts of the house I can't say were human-like, but they at least wanted to be seen as it. They felt wrong, very wrong. Have you ever seen someone walk quickly by an open doorway? My mother and I, and we think my father, but he'll deny it saw these tall figures blur by mostly dark, but occasionally pale. I hated seeing them, I always had this awful sense of dread and anxiety, a fear they'd not walk by the doorway but walk into the room I was in. I think they did, more than once. I used to walk in circles in our living room, while on the phone with my now platonic partner. As I'd walk by the couch, I'd feel as if something brushed against or wrapped around my ankle, and it always terrified me. I was always scared to look behind me or under the couch as a grown woman of 20-something. It hated those things, those moments. They liked to touch my hair and ankles as I tried to sleep, and I'd say it might have been sleep paralysis except it was only ever after I closed my eyes initially, and falling asleep was an hour's long trial. Mom often experienced seeing them and hates them too. Since dad is on call 24 7 there are times he has to go out at night much to our anxiety. We'd often hear the front door open and shut, or hear his voice, and call out to see what had happened or what was wrong. About half the time, he wasn't even home, and for a time we'd write it off that we'd just heard things, until the dog started responding to it too. We used to have a lab mastiff mix who would growl any time this happened and move closer to my mom like he was defending her. I've seen things dart under curtains or beneath sinks, found drawers open and things knocked over and open that had screw on tops or push in tops that no one had touched in months. One time a mounted deer head from my grandfather came off its hook and cracked me in the head. The nail it was on as unbent and undamaged, but it hurt, I assure you. Anyway, more recently during my current visit home, mom says that when she goes over to the house, or what used to be our house, she doesn't like going inside anymore. She says that when she takes the dogs out at night for bathroom breaks, she doesn't look in the dark windows the house and my childhood home share a massive yard, even if her instincts are telling her to. She's scared that if she does something will be looking back at her, or feels like something is looking back at her when she does. I have these same feelings and sometimes when I'm on doggy duty, 
The feeling that something is peeking over the seven foot fence. This post is long, but I'd like to finish it by saying that our new home above the office is much more peaceful. Something opened the locked bathroom door the other night while I was visiting my parents, and an entire shelf popped off its rack in the cabinets a few weeks before that. Strange things still happen, but I'll be honest to say that I'm glad it's nothing like at the old home. These aren't the only moments I've had, which range from hearing muffled conversations for hours in the childhood home in the dead of night, when everyone was asleep, to hearing it again at my friend's house for months and months. I've also experienced things at the high school, where I teach so I'm not sure if it's me or my life, but I'll never be persuaded the supernatural isn't real. My husband and I live in Willow Creek, Collie, in Northern California. Our small town revolves around Bigfoot, and everything here is Bigfoot themed. We even have a cage in case he's ever captured. Our property spans 40 acres and is surrounded by forest service land. We have no neighbors. We have always felt like we're being watched. We barely hear any wildlife and rarely see any despite living in the woods. On a couple of separate nights, we've heard knocking on our bedroom wall or window, which freaked us out but we brushed it off. Tonight though, my husband had to take our quad up to the generator above our house to fill our solar panels with water. It was pitch black, and as soon as he turned the quad around and turned it off, he was loudly screamed at by what he described as a large male human. He did what he had to do and quickly left. He's convinced that whatever it was, it was not human as it's extremely unlikely that we have someone else living in our woods. I'm trying to chalk it up to an animal, but it's getting hard to. Does this sound like Bigfoot behavior or something else? Hello. I listened to few of your ocean creature stories recently. I really enjoyed them. So, I was on a ferry for a school softball trip off Kodiak Island, Alaska in May 2014. I was 18. Many of us had snuck up to the deck around 11 p.m. to watch the waves, smoke cigarettes and weed, and generally be teenagers on a boat without supervision. The sun was about to set, but it was still bright outside. So we're just doing our thing and notice a pod of orcas swimming with the fairy's wake, which is very cool, but not unusual. If you're familiar with the dimensions of an orca fin, you know they're about 4-6 feet in height, and look like big black spikes coming out of the water. They travel and hunt in pods of anywhere between 15-40 whales. Apex predators. The beautiful demon murderers of the sea. Top of the food chain. So we saw a pod of orcas and counted them to be around 10-15, with some babies scattered in there. Very fun to watch, took them a good 30 minutes to all go by. We tried to get pictures, but it was just dark enough that our phone cameras weren't very good. Another 30 or 40 minutes go by, and we've all pretty much sobered up, and it's about to get dark, and we're cold and sleepy, and about ready to go in. No more orcas, haven't seen one for like half an hour, and then one of my JV girls spots another one. So we all turn and look, but one dorsal fin is immediately followed by another and another, and another, and then two more, and then two more after that, in two separate rows, and they're taller, by a lot, and jagged, like some, have whole chunks torn out of them, and they're all 8-10 feet high. And they're all attached to one creature, and we can just barely see its back slicing through the water, covered in these rows of spikes, and it just keeps coming. This thing is like 20 or 30 feet from the ferry, running parallel to it, and we are all transfixed. There's like 9 or 10 of us, and no one is saying a word because we've all turned to look at a whale, and we are all now watching something that is like, horrifically, terrifyingly, and obviously not a whale. Someone tries to take a picture, but it's too dark at this point, and the only reason we can see this thing is the light cast from ferry portholes. 
I really wish you had a picture of it. But we all stand there completely scared stiff and in awe, and we watch this thing just keep surfacing for a good 6 or 7 minutes, which means that whatever it was was long. Like 60 or 70 feet long, or longer, and covered in enormous spikes. It took what felt like an eternity for any of us to say anything after the last of it disappeared back into the strait. I mean if you and like 8 of your friends had just all seen something that all science had definitely pointed to not exist, and you had all seen the same exact thing, and it was very obviously trailing, nay. Hunting, not one but 15 something apex predators, what do you even say to break that silence? That's the thing that eats me about the whole thing, is it was hunting. It was following them. It was literally hunting about 60 tons of toothy, angry, intelligent apex predators. Every once in a while one of us will hit another one of us up and check in like, do you remember this? Was I hallucinating? Did we all see the same, insane, worldview melting, terrifying thing that night? And the reason I know we did is that none of us talked about it after that, not during the trip, not after, not to any of our friends because how do you even tell someone about something like that? Now we have almost 10 years between us, and that night I assume some of them have probably told people. I know I tell people because I've seen a lot of strange things like that in Alaska. Also, there's a very rich history among native Alaskans of something that lives and hunts in the waters around Kodiak. And it's important to tell its story because someday it's going eat a little too much plastic. And no one will ever watch it hunt a pod of orcas from a boat ever again. I always enjoy reading about others experiences, so I thought I'd share some of my own. All my family members have had strange encounters, so maybe it just runs in the family. My earliest experience was in 6th grade. I was home alone, sick from school, and I lived in a Victorian era house that was almost shotgun style. From the living room, you could see straight to the back door, with my parents room on the left and the kitchen at the back right. I remember it was about noon and I was reading Harry Potter on the couch when I saw a large black shadow cross the room out of the corner of my eye. I thought it was a trick of the light, but it happened again in the opposite direction, and then once more towards my parents' room. There was a large crash in my parents' room, and I ran to see what it was, but there was nothing there. While I was in their room, there was a crash in the kitchen. I called my parents, bawling. In 8th grade, I was in the kitchen with my friend, and we were looking into the fridge. I went to walk behind her when a man's voice quickly whispered, watch out in my ear, and right after, I tripped over my friend's foot. In college, some friends and I went on a ghost tour of a local, notoriously haunted house. Before the tour started, the woman leading it was going over rules with about 40 of us and stopped to ask. I'm sorry, is there someone here with a name like X, close to my name? I guessed a spirit was really bugging her about it, but I said nothing, thinking there was no way it was me. Throughout the briefing, I felt like the person behind me was touching my ear. I even turned around to give them a weird look, thinking it was a friend, but it wasn't. When we split into smaller groups, the guide said, okay, the person I was talking about earlier is in this room now. Please, does anyone have a name similar to X? I told her my name, and she said, Yes, it's you. You have a grandmother-like spirit with you. This made sense because my mom always said I had my grandma's personality. I met her once when I was two weeks old before she passed away. A longer story, but TLDR. The same group of friends and I, against my better judgment and my siblings' warnings, messed with a Ouija board. We all got terrifying text right after we closed the session, though no one else was home or knew we were doing it. I interned with the National Park Service, and my park housing was an old Civil War hospital hotel overlooking a river. 
Locals would gasp when they learned I was living there alone because it's known to be very haunted. I walked around the place, prayed over every room, and asked to be left alone. I felt nothing the entire nine months I lived there, except when people visited. My friends and family members would hear people walking up the stairwell all night and knocks on doors that no one could get to. The memory that sticks out the most was when two rangers stayed with me briefly. The first floor was a small museum with an interpretive film running on a loop, and I lived on the second floor. It was my job every day to turn the switch for the movie on when I left and off when I came home. It was a heavy switch in a back room of the house. You had to apply a good amount of pressure to move it, and it would click into place. I remember the noise. You also couldn't get into the bottom level after I locked up. Anyway, the temporary rangers and I went out to dinner and got home later than usual. I realized I forgot to turn the movie off, so I ran back and did so. We talked for a couple of hours upstairs, and the floors and walls were paper thin, so we could hear anything going on downstairs. After about two hours, we heard the movie kick on by itself. I had to go back down in the dark, and sure enough, the switch was back up, and I had to push it back down again. I probably have more well, I know I do, but those are some. Recently, I came across your YouTube channel, and after watching some videos, I felt like this could be a place where I could tell a story that happened to me back in 2016. I saw that you had a place where people are encouraged to talk about their experiences. And that is what led me here. In April of 2015, I moved to Junction City, Kansas after recently being married in March of that same year. I married quick and young to be with my partner at the time, while he was stationed at Fort Riley, Kansas. I was born and lived my life before this time on the East Coast, so moving to the middle of the country was a huge change in my life. I was a senior in college, and I left before graduating to go be with him. He told me that it was not a real relationship unless I was living with him. Even though I have family kind of spread out throughout the states, I did not have any family in Kansas or in the nearby states. The first few months of living in Kansas was a shock to my system. The person that I married changed drastically, and I felt like I did not know the person I just decided to move halfway across the country to be with. The relationship quickly became abusive, and as the months went by I was scared and felt that I was trapped. I could not reach out to talk to anyone about what was going on, I would be threatened, and with his stature of being in the military, and that no one would believe me. My family was also threatened during this time, if I reached out to them, either I would get hurt, or they would. The only reason I am mentioned this part of the story, is to provide some background details that I think are important for the real story in this comment. I felt like I had nowhere to go. And on nights where I did not want to be home, I would get in my car and drive to a nearby lake. The lake was called Milford Lake, and it provided me comfort since I grew up near a town with that same name. When I did not feel safe, I would go to this lake and would look at the stars. If I tried to go to a hotel or motel, my cards would be traced, and he would go there looking for me. I first was introduced to this lake, when we were required to go to this mandatory fun outing for his workplace. Since then, I'd always go to the same spot. Depending on how you were getting to the lake, there were two ways to get to this spot. The way I would typically go would take me on a drive over a dam that was high up. On one side there was the lake, and on the other was land, and a couple more spots of water. It was a long straight ride, and I would turn left to go down this slightly slanted rocky road that led down to this area that led into a circle. There was covered picnic seating on the right when driving by, and there was a little playground on the left in the circle of the small rock path, and parking was usually more forward. There was a bench that I would always sit at. This was a great spot to look over the water. To the left, 
You could see the dam with the road that was used to get there. Looking more left, you could see some small wooden areas that were far off, and were at the base of the dam. Looking to the right was water and lots of trees. This area was not lit at night, and to be fair I was not supposed to be there after a certain time. I was told only once by a park ranger to leave, but other than that the area was pretty isolated when the sun would go down. On one night in the year 2016, I did not want to go home after work, and after picking up some food, went to the lake to watch the sunset. I did this often, and would take time to calm down and enjoyed being by myself in the quiet. There was a couple other people nearby in their cars, but left once the sun went down. At this point, I went for a drive to kill some time until it got darker. I never have seen the stars so clearly as I did in Kansas, I really loved this about the area. Around almost midnight, I drove back to the lake and drove down the small rocky path, past the picnic area on the right, past some parking spaces and parked about 5 feet to the left of the bench that I would sit at. In my car, I had a blanket that I would use to put down on the ground to lay down to look at the sky, so I grabbed that and walked to an area that was about 10 feet away from my car to the right, and laid down the blanket on the cement ground. I did not like to go into the grassy area in the middle of the circle, cause the ground would dip in places, and I did not want bugs crawling on me. Every 10 minuets or so, I would sit up and would look around checking to see if there were any cars or animals. Even if I didn't hear anything, I would just scan the area and would go back to sitting or laying down to check out the sky. About 40 minuets into stargazing, I had an uneasy feeling and sat up. Once again I scanned and didn't see or hear anything so I started to look at the sky again. Only a few seconds after looking at the sky, I felt that feeling again, but it was stronger. I stood up and looked around the area this time. To my left, far away near the base of the dam with the road on it, I noticed some movement. At this point, I was not scared but became cautious of that. I've encountered deer in this area before, and believed that this was probably one of those instances. The wooded area was also far away, and because of the distance, I did not feel like it was a threat even if it was a chaos or something similar. I told myself that I would look back over once the song that was playing on my phone was done, and would adjust from there and sat back down. Before the song could finish, I felt something that I haven't felt before. My stomach dropped, and I felt fear. True fear, and as soon as I went to grab my phone I heard clear as day, move. I jumped to my feet and immediately looked to the base of the dam near the wooded area to my left. The figure that I noticed was closer than it was before, and at this moment I knew that it was coming for me. That it appeared to be on a bee line to where I was. The amount of distance that this figure covered in the short amount of time startled me, and I quickly grabbed the blanket and bundled it up with my right hand inside of it and started unhooking my keys from my belt buckle to hold in my left. I started power walking to my car. For some reason, I did not run. I did not want to run and let whatever it was coming out of the woods to see that I noticed it. While trying to present as much as a clam demeanor as I could, I focused on my car and did not want to look at what was in the distance. That is when I heard the sounds of rocks being stepped on that were not my own. Once again, the area that I last noticed the figure was in a grassy area, and it was about halfway from the base of the dam in my car. The fact that I heard something on the gravel meant that it traveled over 75% of the distance from the dam, and was now almost equal distance from where I was to the car. My car was in the middle, and we were both walking right towards each other. I looked up to gauge where the animal was, and what I saw was not an animal. I do not remember seeing any fine details of the figure. It was completely white, and in my memory, it was tall and walked very rigidly. I cannot recall any face structure, or even clothes. 
I do not know how to convey the feeling of dread and terror that I felt in that moment. Even as I typed this, my heart hasn't slowed and I had to take a few breaks and come back. I quickly looked at my car and started to almost run to my car's door. While I was approaching my car's door, I could see the figure in the corner of my eye and noticed that it was still moving the same way as it was doing before. It did not make any sounds, it did not break into a run, it did not lunge at me. I threw the items I was holding into the back once I opened the door and turned on my car. As soon as my headlights turned on, the figure was within 10 feet of my car and was in front of it. I threw my car into reverse and while backing up, I saw that the figure now broke into what appeared to be a run toward me. I pressed on the gas and took a left to go back up the rocky path that I used to get down, and while I was driving up the path I looked in the review mirror, and could see that this figure was now running after my car. I still do not recall anything that the figure was wearing. As soon as I got up the rock path, and was on the road I drove as fast as I could to get away from that area, and when I looked back I did not see the figure. That night I did not go home. I didn't know what to do and had a massive breakdown while shaking in my car and crying. I drove straight to a Walmart that was over two hours away and stayed in the parking lot until morning. I thought that I was having a moment of psychosis from all the stress that I was going through in this time in my life. I have played this over in my head countless times and still am not sure what happened that night. I never felt that feeling of terror again. And now I never go anywhere alone late at night. For years I have had nightmares of that white figure following me from the woods. I genuinely could not explain it, and thought that I was crazy. It didn't feel normal, and I never spoke about it until a few years ago to my partner. He told me to look up Killer Clowns in 2016, and said that the area that I was in at the time had sightings. I don't remember what the figure I saw was, and even if it was a person. That means that they were standing at the base of a dam late into the night, and waited by themselves for a person to be alone. I also couldn't make sense of the distance that was covered in that short amount of time. It was very difficult for me to write this story. This was the most terrifying moment of my life, and I can't make sense of it. I no longer live in Kansas, and am no longer married. That being said, I still do not feel safe when alone in nature. Thank you for providing a space where people can tell their stories. So this is actually both me and my mom's experience with what we believe was the Jersey Devil, but not at the same time. We had separate encounters. I'm still not sure what I saw. My mom grew up near Morristown, New Jersey during the 60s. She's a pretty skeptical person when it comes to anything supernatural, and I would say I am too. Not religious in the slightest and I don't believe in ghosts, but after my own experience, I do accept that there are sometimes things you can't really explain, and I think she feels the same way based on our conversations, though it honestly creeps both of us out to talk about so it doesn't really come up much haha. It's been a few years since we've talked about it, but from what I remember, mom's experience from what she's told me is this. I think it was 1964 or 1965, so she would have been 10 or 11 at the time. For some background, she has two brothers and both were involved in Boy Scouts, but as the only girl she tended to feel left out when they'd go on campouts etc. She was definitely a tomboy and didn't understand as the little sister why she couldn't also go camping with the boys. Luckily, my grandpa was pretty in tune with this and started including my mom where he could. He was a mechanical engineer and was a big proponent of practical, hands-on knowledge. Just because she was a girl didn't mean she wasn't going to learn how to change a tire or build a fire. My grandpa started taking the boys and her camping himself shortly after my two uncles started scouts. Obviously, she'd get upset when my uncles would go on troop trips without her. 
but my grandpa did his best to give her the same types of experiences where he could. My grandparents tried to get her to join Girl Scouts, but I guess her issue was wanting to be with her brothers doing what they were doing. As I said, I think she was 10 or 11 and grandpa had taken my mom and uncles to some state park for some late summer overnight camping and canoeing. All I remember is it was some river. Base River Forest sounds right after googling. They spent the day paddling around in my grandpa's canoe near the campsite, and then did the typical hot dogs on skewers and s'mores dinner before turning in for the night. Sometime during the night, she woke up needing to pee. There were pit latrines on the edge of the campground, but with it being pitch black out, she laid awake for what was probably 20 minutes but felt like hours from what she said needing to go pee. She finally got up the courage to go, or at least realized it was either that or wetting herself, unzipped the tent, and poked her way across the campsite to the latrine. She went to relieve herself, poked her way back across the campsite, and climbed back into the tent. As she turned around to zip the tent shut, she caught a glimpse of two red dots staring at her from around the side of the latrine she'd just come from. She said at first she just sat there staring wondering what it was. Like, she thought it was brake lights from a car, but it was just woods behind the latrine, so she didn't understand what a car would be doing way over there. That is until they blinked and started moving very smoothly toward her. She said she zipped the tent up, crawled inside her sleeping bag, and didn't move the rest of the night. They were camping right on the edge of the woods so deer or other animals moving around at night isn't unusual. But she said the whole rest of the night she felt like something was slowly moving around their campsite breathing. Any little twig breaking or leaf crunching had her terrified. But she didn't want to seem like a scared little girl and not get invited on any more trips, so she just stayed quiet and didn't wake my grandpa. She did say something to him the next morning, and he joked, Oh, the Jersey Devil. As far as I know, that was the end of it. She insists it wasn't a deer because the eyes seemed to put off a red light of their own, and move so smoothly towards her like they were hovering. She didn't have a flashlight or anything, and other than the moon, it was a pretty dark night, so she didn't believe it was just the reflection of a deer's eyes or something. So this is my story. My grandparents lived in New Jersey until the early 2000s, so as a kid, we'd go up there for Thanksgiving or Christmas to visit. Usually a couple times a year, once in the fall winter and once over the summer. On this particular trip, it was just after the 4th of July in 1999 I was 9. Our neighbors in Virginia had put on a neighborhood fireworks display. So a couple days later, we were up in NJ visiting, and spent the trip swimming in my grandparents' pool. It was a while after dinner one night, and we were sitting out on the porch, watching some stray fireworks that their neighbors were setting off, it was probably July 6th or 7th at this point, and the night was winding down. My grandma had gone up to bed, and it was me, my dad, and my grandpa sitting out on the porch, while my mom and sister were inside watching a movie. I remember it was a warm breezy night, and you could smell the fireworks. My grandpa finally decided to head up after my grandma, and my dad walked into the house behind him to grab another beer, so I was left on the porch on my own. The fireworks had died down a few minutes earlier, so I was about to follow my dad in when I heard a thump up on top of the house. I looked up over my shoulder and saw two red dots on the eave of the roof. I just sat there for a second thinking they were embers from the fireworks. But then they blinked. I don't know what I saw that night, but it most likely flew up on the roof. We never heard any climbing noise. What do you think? My sister and I take our five kids on road trips every year, all over the country. This year we decided to stay a little closer to her home and drove six hours to Fort Davis, Texas. We stayed at a campsite in the state park there. 
The camping sites are broken into groups that branch off of the main road. We were the only people in this loop, except for the camp hosts, and they were across the street and two or three campsites over. Our site was big and surrounded by bushes, and it sat on a small creek. The first night we were there a big thunderstorm moved in at about bedtime. We had a large tent, and then a small one-person tent for the boys to share. My nephew and my son ages 8 and 9 were going to sleep in the smaller tent, while the rest of us were in the big one. Once the storm really got going my nephew became scared and came into the big tent. I didn't want my son to be alone, and I grabbed my pillow and went into the small tent with him. It stopped raining, and we fell asleep. I woke up sometime later, I really have no idea what time it was, I didn't have my phone, I was just laying there awake for no apparent reason. I started to hear a really weird sound about a foot from the tent on the right side. I can only describe it as what a huge bug with wings like something the size of my hand would sound like if it were hitting the side of my tent, basically a really loud fluttering noise. But it didn't make sense, it was the middle of the night, and I knew nothing was touching my tent. Then right underneath this sound came what sounded like an animal-like exhale. Really jagged and almost growling noise, not human, and from something big and louder than the fluttering. The sound was at about maybe knee level. Both sounds started to travel in front of my tent, toward the creek. There was never an inhale. Just a long exhale could have been an inhale, either way there was no break, and it never changed then at the last second as it's about to pass I hear feet under it, they sounded like there were coming from heavy work boots of a full-grown man. After it passed I got a huge whiff of musky odor. I was so scared that I couldn't move and had to make myself breathe. I have never felt that kind of fear before and didn't understand what I had just experienced. The next day there were no tracks even though there was a lot of mud. I thought at first maybe it was a mountain lion, but they are extremely quiet. My sister spoke with the ranger, and they said it was a javelina going to the creek. This was not a freaking pig, okay? There were two distinct footsteps underneath it, not four little hooves. None of these sounds make any sense together, and I have never heard anything like that breathing or that fluttering sound. Not to mention how big the footsteps sound for how low the breathing was coming from. If you have any ideas please share. Most people think I am making it up, or I am exaggerating, but if anything I am not emphasizing it enough. This was primal terror, I was literally frozen with fear, and couldn't feel my body anymore. I want to know what that was. I was referred to you for an explanation. I don't know what I saw. It could have been a bear though to my knowledge they don't live in eastern South Dakota. Anyway, here's what happened. So one night when there was a blood moon, I decided to try and get some decent pictures, and went to a secluded spot just outside of town. Pulling into the area I noticed a youngish tree 3-5 inches diameter had fallen by a nearby creek right by where you could park your car to shore fish in the creek. I started setting up the scope and camera, and I heard a lot of rustling in the brush. Since coyotes are common enough I had my handgun on my hip, so I didn't pay it much mind, but the rustling soon became more akin to something violently crashing through the woods. At this point, I stopped what I was doing and shined my flashlight around to try and see what it was. I couldn't see anything but was concerned by the sounds, so I started to pack my stuff to leave when I heard some splashing followed by the sound of a very large crack. I turned and drew my gun while pointing my light at the fallen tree, and there it stood. Huge adrenaline dump. Everything went in slow motion. This six foot tall thing with what seemed to me at the time the face of a wolf, but much too large to be a wolf or coyote, it was roughly as tall as I am six feet, and as the light hit it paused and looked at me, growled and charged at me. I fired eight shots in quick succession before it barreled into me, knocking me flat, 
but rather than follow through on the attack, it kept running and disappeared into the cornfield. I got up and left the rest of my stuff, and came back the next day to find the farmer, a couple sheriffs, and a game warden. The farmer had sheep, and a couple had been killed the night before, so he had been driving around setting up trail cams and stumbled upon my stuff. The weird trail of smashed corn, as well as some strange prints in the mud, he had called the game warden, and apparently the sheriffs were bored and came to check things out too. I told them about what I saw and was told it was probably a bear, but the tracks were distinctly not bear tracks so I don't believe it. To start I've always believed there's such things as spirits, the paranormal etc. In large part due to my family. Most in my family especially the parents and grandparents are religious, so I've always heard about spirits and what comes after life, but the biggest influence would be my father especially when it came to the paranormal. He was such a big fan of the show Ghost Hunters, that it was pretty normal to find him after work watching the show from his box, set along with some other paranormal investigation shows, and some stuff like Supernatural, and I would always watch these shows and movies with ghosts, vampires, werewolves etc. And for so long it's been one of my biggest interests even now that I'm almost 27. Ever since I was little, I've always wanted to see and learn more and I believe I've had a few encounters, most pretty calm besides the initial startle, but one experience that stuck felt so aggressive. My family moved when I was young into a trailer park in Nebraska to be closer to my ailing grandmother when I was I believe 8 years old. I finished the school year in a new school, but things weren't so worrying being the new kid starting in the middle of the year since I had met two kids who were so nice and befriended me almost immediately who coincidentally were my neighbors one lived next door and the other one rode down from us. The following summer we'd go outside and play almost every day. Everything felt normal throughout the day with nothing eventful happened really. We played, we ran around, and eventually everyone got called home. It was nothing but a regular summer day for me. After dinner and some TV it was starting to get late so everyone went to bed. I laid down and for a little while, rolled around, and struggled to get comfortable. It just wasn't happening, and I wasn't tired anymore from fighting to get comfy so I checked my alarm clock. I still remember it being a few minutes from 2am, and I started thinking about getting up and playing on my old Xbox, thinking it'd burn a little energy and make me tired again. Just before I could sit up there was a light tap on my wall directly behind my headboard. Just the one singular light tap like someone thumped their finger against the wall. I thought maybe it was my mom so I didn't budge so I could sneak a game in when she left. Then there was another, and another until it very quickly turned to sounding like someone tapping all their fingers on my wall directly behind my head. Almost like when someone is thinking or annoyed, and they quickly tap their fingers on their desk as an example. I still thought it had to be my mom, that somehow she knew I was awake, but it deeply deeply felt off. The tapping got harder, it went from light taps to a harder, almost aggravated thumping. I was really starting to get scared when there was another thump, but it was to my left side, and I froze solid under the blanket. Opposite of the wall to my left was one of those old school big screen TVs with the giant back that everyone hated to move. There was no way someone was tapping or knocking from that side with the TV in the way. Then it started to my right in my brother's room, but I knew it wasn't him because he wasn't home that night. He was at a girlfriend's for the night. Almost in perfect sync a very angry, aggressive banging started on the last wall, the one that faced outside, like someone wanting and really trying to beat the wall down, and the rest of the banging started to follow just as aggressively. All four sides sounded like rabid animals were just dying to break down the walls, itching to get to me, and it wouldn't stop. I started to hear this buzzing-like noise above me, above the trailer. 
It reminded me of the noise people make to mimic a cheering crowd, but it was much deeper and scratchier. It just kept getting louder and louder until it was like it was in my head, buzzing and drowning out everything besides the banging and immense fear. It felt like I was surrounded in a trap with something truly awful staring down at me like a predator just beyond my reach waiting for its opportunity. As sudden as it started it just stopped. Everything went dead silent, but I was still frozen and terrified. As soon as it stopped it felt like I could breathe, and I instantly broke into tears. I didn't feel those eyes on me anymore, and as soon as I felt comfortable enough, I quickly grabbed my clock. I was still too scared to uncover myself from the blanket, so I brought the clock to me under the blanket. I don't know why but I wanted to see what time it was maybe hoping someone would wake up soon. That experience felt like a lifetime, but it had only been a few minutes. It started just a few minutes before 2, and when I looked it was barely after 2. I exhausted myself crying so eventually, I did fall asleep, but I made sure to tell my parents the second I woke up. I'm sure like many with a childhood experience, it went in one ear and out the other. But I 100% believe this experience was very real, and that something real was waiting for its chance. Thank you so much to everyone who read this. I'm not so much looking for answers as I was to share my experience, but it's something that's definitely interested me since it happened so I'd love to hear if anyone else has had similar experiences to this. There's a few other experiences I'd like to share later, but for now I thought one of the scariest of mine would be perfect to start. This was back in the late 90s when two of my friends and I were staying at their vacation home along one of the local rivers in South Carolina. The house think three small bedrooms, a sitting room kitchen, and a small external bathroom is on a privately owned island, not theirs which is used for cattle grazing, and is about 3-4 square miles in area. It is accessible by only one dirt road, which takes all of about 30 minutes to travel down as it bends and winds through dense cypress swamps full of alligators and marsh plains. Along the road, there is one other house, just as you get onto the island, which has long been abandoned. This old two-story plantation-style home was supposedly abandoned when the owners a married couple child suffered a fatal accident, and they couldn't stand being there anymore. Aside from my friend's house, the cattle farmer's home, and one other vacation home, the abandoned property is the only other structure. Well, my friends and I were out on the dock doing some night fishing, trying to land a shark or something to throw on the grill, but we hadn't had much luck. The river was as smooth as glass, which was really unusual, because of where the dock is, the current there is usually very strong, even during the tide shift. We sat and chatted, waiting for a bite, up until about 11 p.m., then off to our right towards the coast we heard a loud tone, or wail, which sounded like a mix between a ship's horn, and maybe a wolf howl or something similar. An important note, the island is by car nearly an hour from deep water access, and probably more from the actual ocean, so the likelihood that the sound was a large ship is low. So anyway, we were startled by the sound, and even my friend, who had been spending his summers there since he was in diapers, had never heard the noise before, and was bothered by it. So we decided to pack it in since we weren't catching anything anyway, and had nearly gotten all our equipment back to the house when my second friend heard it. Coming from down the road, back towards the island access, was what sounded either like a cat meowing, or a child crying. We all stood in silence listening, and trying to figure out what it was, and where it was coming from. After listening for about 5 minutes, we decided to hop in the truck and drive down the road, with the windows down, so we could try and find what was making the sound. What started out sounding like a cat, was made clear as we got further up the road, that was not the case. We could clearly hear a child, and it sounded like it was saying, help me. 
We drove very slowly calling out, and we'd wait a few minutes, and hear, help me again, but always further up the road, towards the swamps and the old abandoned house. We were seriously freaked out, because if there was a kid out there, why would they be going away from our calls and light into the swamp? We nearly made it all the way to the abandoned house when the sound just stopped. We waited for nearly an hour and never heard it again. We marked it up as nerves and headed back to the river house, assuming it had been an animal after all, and that we were probably just imagining it saying words. After we had gotten back inside and settled in for the night, we started hearing it again, but as time passed, it came closer to us. We went out and called out again, and the sound would come closer. This went on for hours. Well, we decided, we would try one more time to see if there was a kid lost or something again, important to note, we are miles from the next nearest people, and the noise sounded like a child, think four-year-old, but once we got out in the truck again, the noise stopped. It was now nearly three in the morning, and we had been out in the sun fishing and swimming all day, so we were all tired, after driving around a bit, calling out again, with no luck. We decide to give up. We get back inside again and get into our beds. Then we heard it, clear as a bell, help me, right outside the house. But it sounded so strange, like it was an echo, if that makes sense like it was close but far away too. None of us were brave enough to go commando and leave the house, but we went out onto the porch, which was screened in for bugs, and listened. As soon as we went out, it would stop. Go back into the beds, it would call out again, but in a different location outside the house. It circled the house, calling, all night. We all slept in the living room, but to be honest, there wasn't a lot of sleeping happening. In the morning we went out and looked for tracks around the house, as the foundation is basically sand. There wasn't a mark, no prints, animal or otherwise, and to the best of my knowledge, this never happened again to my friend or any other visitors. To this day we don't know what we heard, but it's probably the most supernatural occurrence I've experienced. I was driving home for the weekend from school at Indiana University. It took me about two hours to get home, and I left Bloomington around 10 p.m. at exactly 10.53. I am on a rural stretch of the two-lane highway I take home, and I notice what appeared to be flashing lights behind me. I thought, great, I'm getting pulled over. So I turned onto the next country road about a quarter mile from where I noticed the lights. As the car came to a stop, and I started to open my glove box to get out my registration and proof of insurance, the lights suddenly disappeared, and no car drove past. Now here is where the story takes a turn for the weird, and I am sure you guys will think I'm just making it all up, because it really does seem like something straight out of a typical UFO movie or story. The electronics in my car started to go haywire. The radio was randomly changing stations while the volume kept going up and down and the dome light and headlight started to flicker and turn off and back on. This was at 10.56 PM, I started thinking to myself that my battery must be failing, or else I have a short somewhere in the electric system of my car. So I lean down to pop the hood, so I can take a look at the battery, and that is the last thing I remember doing. The next thing I knew. I opened my eyes and saw nothing but the night sky full of bright stars. It was a cold night, and it seemed like I had never seen stars that bright in my life. I sat up and looked around, and I saw absolutely nothing. Nothing at all. I was in the middle of a field, surrounded by corn stalks left over from the recent harvest. As I started to come to my senses I started to freak out. Where am I? Why am I asleep in the middle of a field? Where is my car? I got up and started walking toward the distant headlights I could see from a road about half a mile away. When I got to the nearest intersection I looked at the signs which read 350N and 50W. 
I was half a mile away from my car, which was just right off the main road. I started walking toward the headlights I could see on the main road. I can't say how long it took me to walk the half mile, but it couldn't have been more than 10 or 15 minutes. When I arrived at my car all the lights were out and my battery had died, which struck me as odd because I couldn't have been gone for that long. I looked at my phone which was sitting on the passenger seat, and the time was 2.17 and over 3 hours had passed since I turned off onto the side road for the flashing lights behind me. I remember sitting in my car completely dumbfounded, wondering what the hell had just happened to me. After about half an hour of just sitting there, I remembered that my battery was dead. So I got on the phone and called a day to come out and give me a jump. It took about an hour for them to get out to me since I was a good distance away from the nearest town. During which time I just sat in silence, running through the possible scenarios in my head concerning what had just happened. To this day I couldn't tell you what really happened to me that night. All I know is I can't think of any plausible explanation, as to why I woke up over half a mile away from my car in the middle of a cornfield more than three hours after I had stopped. I have only shared this story with one other person my uncle. I am sure people would either look at me like I'm crazy, or they would call BS on the whole story, and I can't blame them. If somebody came to me with a story like that, that so closely mirrors the stereotypical encounter story, I probably wouldn't believe them either. I'm from India, and this story takes place when I was in the 10th standard. We lived in a colony over 25 kilometers away from the city, and I used to go to school by a company provided bus. The buses served many schools and colleges, grouping students together based on their routes. Our driver was notorious. He frequently changed the route, refused to stop for students who weren't exactly at the designated stops, and showed no regard for emergencies. Despite numerous complaints, he was always rehired. One scorching June day, this driver decided not to drop us near our houses since there were only 15 students on board. Instead, he left us at the entrance of our colony, forcing us to walk home. My house was on the opposite end, in the officer's quarters, over two kilometers from the colony gate. As I started walking alone in the blazing sun, I cursed the driver and planned to file a complaint against him. In an attempt to shorten my walk, I decided to take a fisherman's trail through an area where I had to cross two large fields diagonally. One field was covered with three six-feet shrubs, and the other was a plain field with a helipad used for colony gatherings. Only two mostly unoccupied houses lay between these fields. The path wasn't scary, just deserted, and I remembered all the stories about it, particularly warnings from my parents about sightings of coyotes. But it was already 3 p.m., and the heat was unbearable, so I took the shortcut. As I walked through the shrub field, thoughts of how to defend myself from potential dangers filled my mind. The walk was uneventful until I heard rustling in the bushes. It felt like something was following me. I stopped to listen and suddenly saw a man with his face wrapped in a big white cloth common due to the heat pass by on a cycle. Relieved to know the source of the sound, I called out to him for a lift but he ignored me and cycled away. Then the rustling resumed, and I quickened my pace. After crossing the first field, I reached a 200 meter long road with the empty houses, leading to the second field with the helipad. As I walked, the wind picked up, and I suddenly heard the sound of heavy anklets beside me. Turning, I saw a tall woman, over 5 foot 10, in a bright red seri, with a huge veil covering her face, walking past me. She was adorned with jewelry, which was unusual in that deserted place. I couldn't understand how I hadn't noticed her earlier. Goosebumps covered my skin, but I felt compelled to see her face. No matter how fast I walked, the distance between us remained constant, and the rhythmic sound of her anklets was all I could hear. 
I became so focused on her that I nearly broke into a run, yet the gap between us stayed the same. Reaching the helipad in the middle of the field, it felt like I snapped out of a trance. There was no one around no woman, no sound, nothing. It was impossible for her to have disappeared so quickly in such an open area. Feeling bewildered, I continued home. As I reached my gate, my neighbor uncle, who had knowledge of things like the evil eye, called out to me. He looked at me intently, which was unusual, as he typically teased me. I saluted him without speaking and went inside. That evening, I developed a fever of 102 degrees. Out of nowhere, his wife brought clothes, which my mother tied to my hands as he had instructed. The next morning, I was fine, though my mother scolded me for wandering off. I have more stories like this, but wanted to share this one first. If anyone has had similar encounters or wants to hear more, please let me know. Your response will motivate me to share more. Take care. This story didn't happen to me, but to my dad during a business trip, when he was staying at the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley, California. He knew nothing about the hotel or its history at the time. One morning, he woke up early but decided to go back to bed. As he was drifting back to sleep, he entered a weird in-between state, half asleep and half awake. He started to hear eerie coughing and a crazy screeching sound. The sound was something he had never heard before and couldn't even begin to describe. He only said it was a cacophony of noises. As for the coughing, some might think it was coming from the room next door, but he insisted it was right behind him, clear as day. During this experience, he was completely paralyzed and couldn't move, which sounds like sleep paralysis, but he couldn't even open his eyes. He used all his strength to try to open his eyes but couldn't. Leading up to this, he felt a weird sensation throughout his whole body and got chills. The screeching sound was unnatural and so loud he couldn't handle it. He said that when the encounter started, he felt a buildup similar to sensing an earthquake approaching, then ramping up and ramping down. When the encounter was finally over, he was so freaked out that he immediately called my mom, but she was at work and didn't answer. My dad never gets this scared by anything and usually handles bad dreams well, but he insisted this wasn't a dream and that it felt real. Furthermore, my dad is a huge skeptic about the supernatural. While my mom and I believe in such things, he always rolls his eyes and tries to justify our experiences logically. For him to frantically call my mom and text her about a paranormal experience was very unusual. The strange thing about the Claremont Hotel is that it's considered one of the most haunted hotels in the USA. It had burned down back when it was a house in 1901, and then caught fire again about a decade later after it was turned into a hotel. We find this super creepy as it might explain the coughing he heard perhaps it was ghosts from the fires. That morning, my dad had a meeting and told a co-worker what happened, but the co-worker brushed him off, thinking he was crazy. After the meeting, the co-worker admitted to experiencing doors slamming shut and the sink turning on by itself at the hotel. Another co-worker said he had been in a similar in-between state like my dad, but didn't hear anything. This co-worker checked his Fitbit, which showed he had been awake since 3 am, despite feeling like he was half asleep. My dad was really spooked and still is. He researched to see if anyone else had heard coughing or similar sounds, but found nothing. I wanted to share this here to see if anyone else has had a similar experience at the Claremont Hotel, or to hear your thoughts. For those thinking it was sleep paralysis, I always thought your eyes had to be open for that. Besides, my dad has had sleep paralysis before and said this felt different. My family has some theories. I think maybe he somehow connected to a flashback of the fire, experiencing it through someone who was asleep, which could explain why he couldn't open his eyes. 
Maybe the coughing was from past spirits trying to escape the burning hotel, breathing in smoke, and succumbing to the fire. It's far-fetched, but just a thought. Please let me know what you think, and if anyone has had a similar experience at the Claremont Hotel. I saw a humanoid that looked like a dog man. In 2013, Hammett, CA, where I used to live, my mom saw a humanoid. She thought it looked a lot like a dog man and freaked out about it. We also got a vague photo. Also, our house was low key haunted as heck to begin with. My mom went downstairs to let the cats in and have a cigarette. She heard noises while smoking and thought someone was going to steal from us again since we lived in a rather rich street on the edge of town. She used her phone to sneakily take a picture around the corner of the wall towards where she heard noises and ran inside after. Since the flash was on and she was scared she would have been attacked or something. I also think she said she looked back and saw faint red eyes in the darkness. Anyways, in the photo she got, you can see the general shape of the head. It's pale gray white, kinda has the vibe of a ghost or something. My dad thinks it was a spirit, and you can see the arm and hand in the photo. It also looks kinda skinny and is over 6.5 feet tall. Since the fence behind it and the plant in front of it were both around 6.5 feet tall to begin with. I don't have the original photo slash phone anymore but I have the photo from my dad's Facebook. My encounter happened in mid-July 2015. It was a gorgeous Saturday and I was looking forward to traveling down from Wales to Yeovil, Somerset to spend a weekend at a friend's house and have a relaxing weekend away. The drive was long and full of traffic on the way to Somerset. This was the first time I had ever been to his house where he lives alone. I soon discovered that he lives far from any main roads, as I drove my car through winding country lanes three miles away from the closest day road, with barely any houses around the location, just to help you imagine how dark it was that night. Once I arrived we both decided to go to his local pub about 20 minute walk from his place to grab a meal as we both didn't feel like cooking. After we finished our dinner I excused myself for a after dinner smoke outside the front when I noticed two men one of which had a large Irish wolfhound. He seemed to be upset speaking to his friend, both looked late 60s to mid 70s in age. When I was eavesdropping on their conversation, the older man with his dog was explaining how two, yes two of his enormous Irish wolfhounds went missing one night when he shut them out for the night. I just dismissed this as dogs are stolen quite often. I stubbed out my fag and we walked back to his place. Soon after arriving at his house he told me he was going to spend the night at his girlfriend's for a night of fun. He asked me if I would be okay staying at his place alone? Of course I replied, sure mate. No worries. This meant I could just chill, drink some tea, smoke and watch a film or two. I am normally a horror fan but being on my own and in the middle of nowhere that night I decided to watch a more sensible choice. At 12.30 am my film of choice Die Hard had finished. I went around the house, checking that the doors and large windows were locked, only leaving the smaller windows open, as it was extremely warm that night. I laid on his sofa to sleep with my sheet, completely engulfed in the darkness with not a single light on in the house or outside. I had been asleep for an hour when I was awoken by a yipping noise. My eyes at this point were wide open laying there but listening to his horribly creepy noise. I guessed a dog but I've never heard a dog make that noise before. The noise was coming from the stables next door, which were empty, and was moving all around the house. After about 10 minutes it stopped. I, being myself, wondered if it was a fox or foxes fighting and playing. So I rolled a cigarette grabbed a torch from my car and walked out into the yard slash drive to the rear of the house and stables. I was on guard in case it was a dog like them missing Irish wolfhounds, 
which are very, very large dogs. That's when I heard a loud, but very low rumbling growl from behind the stables. I completely froze. Shining my light onto the end of the stable I could see nothing there, but knew from hunting that there was something there. I tried to mimic the yipping I heard earlier, badly mimicking I will admit. I quickly learned I made a horrible, horrible mistake. Its head appeared only 25 to 30 foot from me, from the stables. Its head was about 3 feet off the ground on all fours. It was no dog that I recognized. Once it completely appeared, its body was huge, lean and covered in thin, almost non-existing hair, but up towards the shoulders and head it had thick, black fur, pointy ears and a large snout like that of a German Shepherd, just a lot bigger and wider. At this point I didn't know what I was looking at. It looked like a dog but it wasn't. It was far too large, and the human-like arms and shoulder sockets confirmed that. It bared its teeth at me, rolling out a low and louder growl than before. I bolted back to the house, the fastest I have ever run, slamming the door behind me, locking it and closing the small window to the living room, drawing the blinds after. I was breathing uncontrollably and panicking, being unsure if it had followed me back, knowing it would have caught me if it had desired. For the rest of the night I could hearing yipping and distorted barks circling the house until 4.30 am, when it all fell silent. I have never been a believer of ghosts, ghouls, dogman, werewolves, vampires etc. But now, after what I have seen, if that was a werewolf or a dogman, I don't feel safe anymore. I always thought them to be a creation of Hollywood and filmmakers but now I know they are real living breathing things. I can say, hand on heart, I won't be returning to my friend's house. Nor will I go into the countryside or woods at night. Name withheld. In March 2015, I woke up at around 3 AM. I have no idea why. Usually I wake up to drink water or use the bathroom, but I needed neither of those. Anyway, I was living in Southern California at the time near Camp Pendleton and where I lived there was my neighborhood then just wilderness. There was nothing beyond my neighborhood for miles, just land. Just an FYI, I have always been into the supernatural, but I don't think I really believed it until this experience. Before I went to sleep I opened my window because it was hot and I had my curtains open and my shades open and pulled up to make sure air was getting in. So, at 3 AM I woke up and just looked out my window which was next to my bed and I thought I saw someone standing at the crosswalk across the street. I was just thinking that's so weird because usually we didn't have runners or early morning walkers until about 4. 45 AM. So I got up and went to my window so I could get a closer look and what I saw I will never forget. This thing was standing, but its legs were bent and it had some white fur covering the body, however I could still see some skin. Its back was hunched over and its face looked like some sort of dogs. If this creature was standing straight up, I'd say that it would be about 7 or 8 feet tall. Now mind you this was at 3 AM so I was just like wow okay you're hallucinating go back to sleep. However, I was literally paralyzed and could not take my eyes off this creature. Its nose and ears just look so similar to a dog's or some sort of wolf or coyote. Where I lived, coyotes were very prevalent, however they never really came into the neighborhood. So. As you can tell I was just completely shocked and nervous and as I was about to shut my window the thing turned its head and stared right at me. It was standing directly under a streetlight so I could see its features very clearly and its eyes were so black, but somehow they were shining to where you could really see them staring right into your soul. That did it for me, I slammed my window shut, pulled down the blinds, closed the curtains, and jumped right into bed while pulling the covers over my face. I never went back to sleep that night. Flash forward two years later, 
In June of 2017, I again woke up, but this time I was just hungry. So I went downstairs to get some food and sat at my kitchen table. In the chair that I sat, my back was facing the window on the side of the house. This window was about a foot off the ground and it was open about 10 inches because my mom forgot to shut it. Now, that window had no screen because it got torn somehow and we just didn't get around to replacing it yet. Anyway, I had my earbuds in and was watching a movie or show, I can't exactly remember, but I heard a noise. I couldn't tell if it was from the movie or from outside so I paused it and listened. I then heard heavy breathing, but I have never heard this kind of breathing before and it was coming from directly behind me, right outside the window. The breathing was rough, rigid, and sounded not anything like a human. I was too scared to turn around, but the hairs on the back of my neck were standing up and I had goosebumps everywhere. The breathing lasted for about two minutes then I heard heavy footsteps, as if this thing was walking away. After about 10 minutes have passed, I shut the window, locked it, closed the curtains, and ran up to my room. I told my parents about my first encounter the next day after it had happened. I was 16 at the time and still living with them. They just kind of looked at me and laughed and said I was seeing things and that it was probably just a coyote. After my second encounter, I told them the next day and that time they really thought I was just tired and was hearing things. My question to everyone out there is, have any of you experienced something similar to this? Was this just a coyote or do you guys think that I was hallucinating? It's been bothering me for a while now and I had to download this app to get my story out there because I cannot deal with no answers. This happened probably about 11 years or so ago now. I lived in an area with some rock faces behind our house and about a half mile away we had an irrigation ditch. The entire neighborhood made a big circle, about a mile to walk, with the cliffs on one edge, irrigation ditch on the other. To note, we occasionally had coyotes and mountain lions in the area, but pretty rarely no bears in this part of the state. So one late summer or early fall night I stayed up late playing video games with a friend online. It was nice out, and I usually went for a walk at night. Even though it was around 2 or 3 am I decided to go for one. I had a flashlight with me as I was walking and everything was fine. There's this other area around the neighborhood circle that there's an empty lot and a small field. The road curved here and the empty lot was a hill so you couldn't see the next house. The field also bordered the irrigation ditch which was drained at this point. I get to the edge of the lot and the field when my flashlight went out. At that exact moment a truck came around the corner and stopped, which was odd since I was on the side of the road. I figured the person was just shocked to see someone but the hair on my neck stood up and I saw something move out of the corner of my eye. I looked towards the ditch and I saw three figures moving. They were hunched as they ran from behind a tree. It was almost like all three of them were using their upper body to pull their rear legs, not like an animal at all. I couldn't see great details but it had the muzzle and ears of a dog. All three of them disappeared into the ditch. Once they vanished the truck hit the gas, hard sputtering up rocks and took off and I was left in darkness. A second later my flashlight came back on and I ran the opposite way. I ran all the way to my house. I got to the sliding glass door and went to fling it open when I heard a low growl coming from the large lilac bushes behind me. I ran in, locked the door, and shined the light into the bushes through the glass. I saw the reflection of eyes in the bush before it moved away. The next day I went back to the tree that the things had moved behind and from where I'd seen the tops of their head, crouched they had to have been four feet. The eye reflections I saw in the lilac would have been about seven-ish feet. I never saw them again. I also didn't go on night walks after that. 
Okay so about 8 years ago my family and I were riding ATVs on a night run which wasn't uncommon for us to do while camping. This was also in Southern California. We followed a trail for about 10 miles into the desert until the trail kind of faded and we started making our own route. My cousin who was in front of me and leading the group slammed on his brakes and pulled out his extremely bright flashlight to catch a creature that was about 7-ish feet tall crouched down from standing to all fours then it began to run on all fours across the front of our headlights and into the dark desert. About 10 of us saw this thing and it had silver and dirty white hair that was longer than a coyote or wolf. It had a muzzle and ears like a canine. There is coyotes in the area but nothing this huge. It was enormous. We have lived in the desert all of our lives and rode those areas often but never before or after have encountered anything like that till this day. I do believe there are things out there that we cannot explain. I've seen it. My first post on Reddit so bear with me but this topic is so out there I thought this might be a good place to discuss the strange goings on in my woods with a larger audience. I'd like to preface this post by stating I'm a highly educated and scientific person and have never been a believer in the supernatural, Bigfoot, or things of that nature. That being said, I'm at a loss for the things my family has encountered on my property over the last seven years and would love to hear your suggestions. Here's my story. Seven years ago my wife and I purchased a property in 11 acres of woods in a rural part of northeastern Minnesota. The woods were connected to a larger acreage of fields and woods of about 160 acres and although sparsely populated, the land is near a fairly busy state highway. There are some housing developments in the area but they are 3 to 4 miles away and the majority of the land all around our property is farm fields, woods, and rivers. It's remote but with towns so close I wouldn't call it wild by any means. I'm mentioning this because I've heard many Native American legends of things in the deep northern woods of Minnesota and Canada but the area in which we live is not that. Rural yes, but not the endless north woods. As I said earlier, I'm not a believer in the supernatural and have never been afraid of the woods or the outdoors even though I have a healthy sense of caution and respect for large bears, moose, wolves, or other potentially dangerous wildlife. I am also an avid hunter and mountaineer and have experienced many nights in the wilderness. I've had numerous encounters with dangerous animals or situations so I'm not spooked easily. Knowing my state of mind is important to my story because many so-called supernatural encounters can be explained by people with an already high level of belief, anxiety, or fear. That's not me. Well, that all changed after the first few weeks of moving in. The house and land had been abandoned for a couple of years due to foreclosure so a lot of work needed to be done to get it back into shape. Wildlife had grown accustomed to no human presence and black bear frequently roamed the yard at night along with many other woodland creatures. We also found a lot of animal bones scattered throughout the woods and coyotes were abundant. One night during those first few weeks we had a rainstorm and I was worried about a broken downspout potentially causing a basement leak. It was about 10 pm so I grabbed my headlamp and headed outside to deal with the situation. Behind our house is a fairly large swampy area that divides the woods. I had my back facing this area while fiddling with the downspout when suddenly I had this intense feeling of dread. It's really hard to explain the feeling but it was like my body knew something was back there. It wasn't a normal feeling or observation. Never having felt this type of fear before I tried to stay calm and slowly turned around to point my headlamp back towards the swamp. What I saw was something I still can't explain. Eyes. Numerous glowing slash reflecting eyes staring back at me. These were not eye reflections that you typically see with a deer or other animal since they were at different heights and when I pointed my headlamp spot beam directly at where you would expect a head to be there was nothing there but weeds and trees. 
When I turned the headlamp off they were still there and glowing as if a light was being shined. They did not move, they just stared through me. Needless to say, I bolted and ran as fast as I could back into the house and explained it away as deer or raccoons. Later that summer I was sitting out on our screened-in porch that partially faces the swamp and connected woods to the west. It was approximately 11 p.m. when I began to hear what sounded like a bear fighting with or attacking a cow. Since there was a small farm to the southwest of my property I assumed that perhaps a cow had wandered into the woods and been attacked by a bear. I really didn't know if this was something a bear would actually do but it was my only guess based on the sounds I was hearing at the time. It was clearly some kind of roar like a bear but then followed by a frantic sounding cow's mooing. This went on for over an hour and it was perhaps one of the most horrible sounds I've ever heard. It did not frighten me since I had this rational explanation in my head. Even weirder, this same series of sounds happened again the next summer. I never investigated the area of the woods these sounds came from since it was not my property. A couple of years later I had the chance to purchase this area and 70 acres to the west, which consisted of the woods that connected to mine as well as a few tilled fields, more woods, and ponds. As part of purchasing this land, I of course spent a great deal of time walking around on it to get a good understanding of its value and layout. As part of my walk, I was able to get a much better look at the farm set up to the south. The farm did have cows as I suspected but to my surprise the area they were kept in was a long distance from my house. Much too far for me to hear them and the fencing was also extremely well built and electrified. Looking at it there was just no way a cow was wandering off from that farm. I didn't really think about this fact until recently but feel it's best to lay everything out in chronological order. After obtaining the property I proceeded to put up tree stands at various locations along with trail cameras in order to prep for the upcoming deer hunting season. One spot was the hilly woods where I heard those sounds many years prior. Again, I did not connect these two things until now. The area was very odd as whenever I hiked through there I always saw some new strange thing. One time my son and I found an old game snare tied to a tree with what looked to be dried blood on the tree bark. Another time we found at least a 100 year old tree with a barbed wire fence completely spiraling the entire trunk growing in and out of it at different intervals. I've also found many tree trunks with very large scratches or claw marks not resembling an antler rub. Perhaps a bear? We'd almost always find dead animals' bones in this area and even this winter I found a couple of deer legs snapped and picked clean. My sons have found numerous animal skulls there as well. As I was saying, I put a game camera in this area since I'd seen tracks and sign and wanted to get a sense of the best places to hunt. I've tried one there many seasons and unlike my other cameras, I've never captured anything at all on the camera. Nothing. My son has posted there a couple of times for hunting season and has mentioned the strange sense of quiet. He's used to the forest sounds coming back after sitting still for long periods of time but in this spot there are never any sounds. He has mentioned hearing something walking around though. A couple of years ago my son went out hiking in the woods to try and find me since I was out doing some forest management. As he walked through this area he thought he spotted me coming through the woods fast but quickly noticed the walk and clothing were nothing like mine. He said the person he saw did not notice him at all and seemed to be walking in a straight line like they had tunnel vision or something. Seeing someone in this part of the woods and their direction of travel don't at all make sense since there really would be no reason to be there or to be headed that way as it leads to deep ravines and an uncrossable river. After he found me and explained what he saw, I quickly went over to investigate to see if we had a trespasser. I hiked for quite a while but never found anything or anyone. If someone was there they either got picked up on the road or vanished. That same year my son had a friend over and they went for a late afternoon walk in the woods. 
As it began to get dark they made their way back by walking on the edge of the field that is next to this area of woods. As they passed by they said they saw a figure a little ways off in the trees. Whatever they saw was near one of the hills in this patch of forest and seemed to be making some kind of hand gestures. It began walking slowly towards them when they called out hey hello. Here it stopped still and said nothing. It was at this point the boys sensed something wasn't right and bolted back towards the house. They rushed into the house and told me what they saw and I of course laughed it off as their mind playing tricks on them. My son described the figure as very tall, like 10 to 15 feet but with skinny arms and his body was dark all over. Not hairy per se but dark. They even thought it was an animal at first because of the weird way it looked. He couldn't really describe it very well other than gaunt or skinny and strangely dark. Me being the curious and protective father I am was worried about it being trespassers, drug addicts, or both so I told them I would go take a look. They brought me to the area and pointed to where it was standing and I headed into the woods. Since it was winter and there was snow on the ground I thought it would be easy to locate the tracks of whatever this was and find out where it came from or went to. When I got to the spot there wasn't a single track or disturbance in the snow. There was no way an animal or man could have been in that area and not left tracks. They had either made it up or their minds had played tricks on them. Or so I thought. To this day my son and his friends still swear they saw it clear as day and I can definitely attest that their fright was real. My wife has also experienced strange thrashing sounds and other feelings of dread or being watched in this part of the woods and generally refuses to go over there anymore. All of this brings me to today where I had a sudden realization that all of the strange sounds, sightings, bones, and events seem to be centered around this one area and I'm just at a complete loss to what it all means. It's all too strange to really bring this up and discuss it with people I know around here but I wanted to share my story and see if anyone in this community might have any theories or ideas on what we might be dealing with here. I'll continue to investigate on my end but would love to see what you all think. Thanks for listening. You can take this with a grain of salt, as I was 11, almost 12, at the time. But I was not a kid to make stuff up. I mean, before this I don't think I've had a paranormal experience, and after it, I've only had a few minor things happen that I'm skeptical over. I've lived in Illinois my whole life. From 0 to 4 I lived in a Chicago suburb. At age 4 we moved to the boonies, a very small rural farm town way closer to Rockford than Chicago. So most of my life I've really lived near corn and forests. There's a small river near my house. Big enough to not be a creek but still pretty small. The area surrounding it is relatively dense forest. Nearby is a small forest preserve but the area of the forest we had gone to that day was way denser than the forest preserve. I was riding bikes with my best friend at the time, who still remembers this. Basically we rode to a part of the forest we'd never been to before, and started walking in. There were no paths. We didn't even get that deep in the forest until I heard a crack of a thick stick. Now I'm super outdoorsy, because of where I live. I used to spend hours during the summer exploring the rural areas with my younger brother, and this was years ago when kids kinda just played outside with no repercussions. My friend whom I was with was more of a suburbs kid. When the stick cracked I was the one to start looking around while my friend heard it but kept looking at her feet. So I looked up for a second and saw something that scared the living s out of me. A massive black wolf dog thing leapt from behind a tree to another tree. I even remember it was moving west east in the forest, from my right to my left. It looked like pure shadow. I didn't see hair or eyes or fur but it is like it was almost blacker than a shadow. Probably couldn't have been more than 20 or 25 feet away. It disappeared when finally it was behind the tree to the east. I booked IT. 
My friend ran after me. Afterwards we discussed. Friend never saw the actual dog thing, but we talked about the feeling. We both felt as if we were in some sort of dream state. It was total Oz effect. Things got unnaturally quiet and I felt I was in a trance, as did my friend. I almost felt my eyes growing heavy during the walk into the forest, and unlike the regular Oz effect it felt sort of peaceful. But maybe it's because I was a naive kid and didn't recognize danger. We eventually returned home and told my mom who kind of just brushed us off of course but who did comfort me because I was shaking. Hard. Next day I was on a bike ride with my brother near the woods, and as we were leaving we heard the most maniacal laugh. It sounded like the devil. I can't even really describe it except that it was like something out of a horror movie. My brother was in front of me and turned around and gave me an extremely freaked look, so he heard it too. We pedaled our bikes as hard as possible out, and again told my mom who kinda shrugged. Let me tell you I slept with the lights on for probably three months. And during that time I was constantly on edge and did not sleep well. I just have so many questions. The forest was. I mean, a real forest, but it was still close to some houses. Why would a dogman type thing be here? There are also no wolves here whatsoever and it was far too big to be a coyote much less a pitch black shadow coyote. How did it disappear as well? And I am not positive the laugh was related. I guess it could have been some older kids that were messing around with us. It may have been but it sounded just wrong and we didn't hear or see anyone else around. After I saw it I was terrified. I mean, I was 11 using my dad's dial up internet to look up things I saw. I was terrified it was an omen of death or something but, thankfully I'm alive 13 years later. Anyway. Tell me what you think. This happened two hours ago. My friend is on an emergency trip to California and is driving through Nevada at this moment. She has been driving since yesterday afternoon, occasionally stopping to nap. I called her at two hours ago and woke up her, she was so tired she had to rest somewhere between Clive and Wendover. When I called her she was trying to tell me something very strange had happened but couldn't get it out. At the end of that call she passed a doll that was either tied or impaled on a post next the road. I just got off the phone with her a few minutes ago and she told me that she had stopped to get some sleep. She laid down and was dozing off listening to the cars drive by on the road when everything went completely silent. She assumed it was a break in the traffic, but after napping for 10 minutes she heard something moving outside of her car. She didn't see anyone, so she laid back down, and then heard something kick sand up onto the passenger door of her car. She got up, decided to leave, and when she looked out her passenger side window she saw something that was blacker than black. She couldn't describe it other it was blacker than black and there was definitely something at the window of the passenger side door. This is right when I called her the first time. A few minutes later is when she saw the doll on the side of the road. If anyone has any ideas on what happened or similar experiences in the area would love to hear them. I lived alone and in this remote location we don't have cable so the only option is satellite TV. It was a humid summer night in July and the TV was acting up so I needed to go out and readjust the satellite like usual. I took a flashlight and a gun with me. When I went outside it was unusually quiet. I also purchased an or due to other sightings I've had but they weren't credible enough to chalk it up as a dog man like so silent it was unnerving. I brushed the thought off and went to the dish which is in the corner of my yard. I went to work, making sure all the wires were all right and pointing it to a different angle. Suddenly I heard a small snap of a stick to my left and turned the flashlight to the direction and I saw a creature standing there. 
I got a good look at it for what seemed like an eternity but was for only about 10 seconds. I slowly backed off and ran back to the house and locked all the doors and windows. The creature was unlike anything I have ever seen before. When I shined the light at it, the first thing I saw was the head. It has cropped ears that pointed upwards. Its snout was narrower than a bear's and longer and I could make out large teeth protruding from the jaw. Its eyes were a deep red shade that seemed to reflect off the light I was pointing at it. The body was muscular and huge. It had long arms that appeared to be longer than its legs. Broad shoulders that tapered into a skinnier waist. It was slightly crouched over when I saw it, with one hand wrapped around a small tree. I could make out the legs which looked similar to a dog's legs, it had obvious hocks. Even with the crouched position, it was about my height which is six foot. Standing up to full height this creature could easily be 7.5 feet tall. The fur was black and thicker around the neck and chest and the bottom half significantly less so. I don't know if it was aggressive or not. What I know is I had a feeling of dread unlike anything I've ever experienced. Was it just observing me or stalking me? For a creature this large as was deceivingly silent. It got within 15 yards of me without me noticing. All I knew was I needed to get out of there and not find out. I don't live on the property anymore but after the event I never had another face-to-face -face encounter. But I would hear sounds in the woods I couldn't explain. They would start off relatively quiet, and work their way up to furious howls slash screams then back down to quiet again. I don't know if this was the same thing because it could be local wildlife. Anyway, about three nights ago, I saw something that I still can't fully understand or explain. First, a little background. I live in mid-Michigan in a small residential slash suburban town surrounded by cornfields, you know the type. However, I do live in the more populated area as my parents' house, where I currently reside, is located within walking distance of our downtown. Our street is by no means desolate, dark, or isolated, and most of the houses are fairly close to one another. A pretty urban setting given the town itself. Okay back to the other night. It was about 2. 30 AM and since it's pretty normal for me to be up that late, me and my dog have developed what I call our little routine. He comes to my door, lets out a huff to inform me that he's there, and then we go downstairs where I let him outside through the front door to go to the bathroom. After completing his business, he comes in and we share a share a midnight snack of ham straight from the fridge lol. Now keep in mind, my dog is extremely well trained and very old. He doesn't need a leash or a fence to keep him from running away. He always comes right back after he's done. He'll even wait at the door if you aren't there. So on this particular night, I open the door for him and I'm just about to turn and walk away so I can prepare our midnight snack. When I notice he's still standing on the porch staring across the street. This isn't completely out of the norm for him but this was lasting a bit longer than usual. When he finally jumps off the porch I follow his line of sight where he had been staring and I see what looks like a large dog or maybe even a wolf, slinking across my neighbor's yard on the other side of the street. For the first few seconds I'm trying to figure out WTF this thing is, because it looks like it could be a dog but something isn't right. It's too long and the way it's moving isn't normal. And even though it was only about 50 feet away, it looked as though it were blurry. I can't think of any other way to describe it. None of it made sense. At this point I go into panic mode because so far this creature hasn't seemed to notice me or my dog, but if it does, my dog doesn't stand a chance. Like I said, he's old. And also a Pomeranian. Whatever this thing was, it would destroy him no doubt. I decide to slowly open the outer glass door, hoping to create just enough noise to alert my dog that it's time to come in, 
but not enough for whatever that thing is to hear me too. Luckily, my dog notices right away and starts running back towards me. But at the same time, this dog creature starts turning toward me, slowly. It almost felt fake how unnatural it moved, like animatronics or something. I'm not even sure what I'm looking at, but I have this indescribable feeling that I'm not supposed to be seeing this. So, as this thing is turning to look at me, my dog is coming through the door simultaneously and for about one second, I take my eyes of the creature thing to look down at my dog and close the door. When I look back up, this thing has moved about 30 feet to the left into my neighbor's driveway rather than their yard, and is standing on its hind legs at around 8 feet tall, staring at me. Now I'm really freaking out, how did it move so quickly, and how did it not make a single sound? How is it so tall? I literally looked away for maybe a second. I look away again to lock the door and gather myself, only to look again and see absolutely nothing. It was gone. This whole ordeal only lasted maybe 20 to 30 seconds total. Shaking, I give my dog his ham and mine, and I run downstairs to my brother's room in the basement to tell him what happened. Being a normal 19 years old playing video games, his response was wow WTF that's super weird. But honestly I just needed to tell someone, to confirm that what just happened actually happened and that I wouldn't wake up the next day and convince myself it was a dream. Over the last few days, I've told anyone who would listen about what I saw, including my parents. Those who are closer to me seemed a bit more unnerved, because like I mentioned earlier, I don't usually believe in this type of thing. They could tell I was shaken by whatever it was that I saw. Tonight, after some random googling as the result of my restless mind, I came across what appears to be the exact description of what I saw. The dog man, which eventually led me to this thread. I've never heard anything about it before, but I am now fully convinced I saw one in front of my very own eyes, and it saw me too. On a summer day when I was around 4 or 5, all of the neighborhood kids were playing near a hay field. Someone threw a ball into the field and I ran into it to retrieve it. The sun had just set, and I could still see where I was going. All of the sudden I came within 5 feet of a figure, crouched in the grass. It was down on its haunches. I stopped and we just looked at each other. All I can describe it as was it looked like a werewolf. Part man, part dog. It began to growl. A low throat, deep growl. And then it stood up. I can tell you that of course, I was a kid and pretty small, but this thing, this creature stood at least 7 feet tall. And when it stood, and looked down at me with its very human eyes, it growled again with its mouth open. I wet myself, stood there and peed in fear. I turned around and ran as fast as I could. I tried to tell my two older brothers, but of course got in trouble for peeing my pants instead. When I took my husband to my old hometown, I showed him the spot. He was amazed that I remembered so much in detail. I'll never forget it. It's been 51 years, and the memory is still as vivid. My brother and I saw something that I discovered years later to be a popular myth in northern Michigan. When we were teenagers, we took a trip with my cousin and her family to their cabin in Gaylord. Me. It was a very rustic cabin that's been in her husband's family for generations. Nobody slashed nothing around for several miles, very thick woods. Breathtakingly beautiful. There is no road that goes to the cabin and there is no driveway or path. You literally follow a map and drive off into the woods until you find it. My cousin's husband mentioned that past generations had built other, smaller cabins nearby and would write journal entries about their experiences. Some of the entries date back to the early 1900s. 
Thinking that was the coolest thing ever, we grabbed protection, on the chance that we run into a bear or something. A flashlight BC it was getting late, and made our way into the woods. We did not intend to be out long, mostly just planning a destination for the next day's adventures. When we found one of the cabins, maybe a 20 minute walk from the home cabin, we decided to take a break and see what's inside. Neither of us were aware of how quickly it gets dark when you're in woods that thick and the next thing we knew, it was pitch black outside. We panicked a bit BC these are not woods that you want to be in at night. And without the light of day, we have no idea how to get back. Not the best decision making on anyone's part but hey, what can you do now? We remembered what we were told. Make enough noise and if there are any dangerous animals nearby they will likely get scared and go somewhere else. The predators in the area aren't exactly hungry, so we should be fine. We remembered this too late BC the next thing we know, there is a pair of glowing yellow eyes off in the distance, moving very slowly towards us. A large white silhouette of a wolf comes into view with those yellow eyes. As soon as I can say oh crap, is that a wolf? About a dozen more pairs of yellow eyes appeared. We had been joined by an entire pack of wolves. Just staring at us. To paint the picture, the cabin is about the size of a small RV, and the entire front side of it was plexiglass window. The door was just a screen, we knew that we were supposed to make enough noise to keep predators away from us, we had no idea what to do if we found ourselves in the middle of a wolf's den, with all eyes on us. Both terrified and in total awe, we just froze. We heard another wolf pack howling a few miles behind us. And then another one off to the right. This made us even more terrified BC we were told that wolf packs typically avoid each other's territories so what were they all doing so close? We are both completely aware that they could have just sounded closer than they were, but, in the moment, they literally sounded like they were right there. We couldn't tell if minutes were passing or hours, we were just frozen. Hoping that my cousin's husband wasn't going to stumble into this den looking for us. The wolves started to lay down one by one. Every now and then we'd see a pair of eyes pop up, but mostly they had stopped caring that we were there. That's when it happened. Much like the first wolf that we saw, a pair of yellow eyes was approaching from the distance except this time. The silhouette was huge and moved like a ghost. My brother grabbed my arm tightly. I think BC he was trying to not piss his pants. I just about did when I saw it too. Whatever was walking towards us, was not like the other wolves at all. The only way that I could describe what I was seeing is to compare it to Professor Lupin from Harry Potter. It looked like a werewolf, but on all fours. It had a humped back and its shoulders were higher than what a canine normally looks like. It moved its way around the sleeping wolves, towards the cabin. Towards us. I'm doing everything in my mind to tell myself that it was just a weird looking wolf, maybe some sort of deformity or that my eyes are playing tricks on me in the moonlight. There is no way that what I think I'm seeing, is actually there. That was when it stood up, hunched over and slowly walked up the steps to the cabin door, remember, the cabin door is just a screen. Instead of opening it, it just hunched over and sat down on the porch. I'll never forget the way it was breathing. Heaving, is more like it. Its entire body rocked back and forth with every inhale slash exhale while it looked over the sleeping wolves. I whispered to my brother WTF is that? And it started to moan and then growl, stood back up and walked to the other side of the porch. Got back on all fours, crawled down the steps the way a person would if they were on all fours, and began walking circles around the cabin before coming back to the steps and rocking slash heaving at the foot of the steps, again facing the wolves. Eventually it got up and walked to behind the cabin. I have never been so scared in my life. What the F was that thing? 
We sat there frozen in absolute silence until the sun came up. I'm not sure that I blinked ONC but we never saw the wolves get up and leave. When the sun started to peer through the tree canopy, the whole area was just clear. It was only us. Wolves really are majestic creatures. It was impressive to witness just how stealthy they can be. When we got back to the home cabin we assured our panicking cousin that we were fine but when we told her what we had just experienced, her husband laughed at us. He had been going to this cabin for his entire life and he has never seen a wolf come this close, let alone an entire pack. He seemed to not realize that he and his friends partying out there is a bit more deterrent than my brother and I sitting quietly. He about walked away from us when we told him we heard multiple packs. We decided not to mention Professor Lupin. If he thought we were imagining the wolves, what would be the point in telling him we were stalked by a mutant one? Neither of us are the type of people that believe in werewolves or things like that, and still don't, but we know that what we saw was unbelievable. Definitely not an animal that I've ever known to be in existence. Fast forward 13 years later to now. I'm watching a documentary on legends of different creatures and learn about the Michigan Dog Man. Ridiculous name, with mostly ridiculous and unbelievable stories, like mine. I do a little more research and find that there are a lot of people from northern Michigan with a very similar story. The creature that these people are describing is almost exactly what we experienced. A human-like creature with the head of a dog. The reports of this creature are mostly centered around northern, lower peninsula Michigan, where you will find Gaylord. I am not the type to jump to believing things like this. All I know is that Wolf looked mutated and it stood up and walked up those steps. My brother and I have always shared this do you remember that time in Gaylor the people thought we were exaggerating about. Mostly we leave out the oddity, BC besides the terror, this was the coolest thing I've ever experienced. It's just a cool story to share. Learning that this monster-like thing that we saw is actually a thing has rocked me to the core. WTF did we see that night? We were on our way from our aunt's house, because she needed help mounting her new TV. So, on the way from the store, we stopped at our aunt's place, helped her and went on about our business. Our aunt lives in this neighborhood that's out in the country, so there's nothing but miles and miles of trees with a few houses in between. Mom was the one that was driving and we both saw this tall, lanky body, white creature with like the face of a deer, but we both knew it wasn't a deer. Mom started speeding fast as hell down the freeway and what made this even scarier is that we were the only cars on the road. For a while, we didn't even say anything to one another and she finally said, did you see that thing run across the road? I told her I did and we drifted off into silence again. Today, she brought it up again and said it looked like a Wendigo and I definitely agreed. Posting it to this subreddit, because she thinks this is the second time that she's seen this thing. Edit, to everyone who was saying that it's not a Wendigo or that's not what it looks like. My mom was the one who pulled up pictures of what we saw and it was under the Wendigo name. Also, thanks for clarifying that they're not native to Florida, because again, never heard anything about them being in this neck of woods. Locally or from my elders. A 13-year-old boy was killed this past Tuesday in Knott County KY. I've been following the stories trying to stitch together the evidence to make some sense of it all. He was staying at a relative's house and familiar with the area. Playing in the backyard, relative called 911 at 6 p.m. saying the boy was being attacked by a canine type creature. First responders on site at 6 30, the 911 caller directed them up the mountain behind the house. They had difficulty getting up the mountainside because of the steep slick terrain but found the boy dead 300 to 400 feet straight up the rain slick mountain. 
State trooper reported something is out there coroner confirmed boy was killed by a canine type creature but can't identify what exactly. The latest reports are canine creature. No wolves in KY for decades. A full grown 40 pounds coyote can't drag a 100 pounds dead body up a mountainside. No mountain lions in KY. A feral dog or even several feral dogs aren't dragging 100 pounds of dead weight up a mountainside, not a bear, coroner has determined cause of death to be a canine type creature. The funeral was yesterday. I have communicated with the relative who set up the GoFundMe page and three different reporters. All say canine creature. Coroner has had ample time to test DNA. Known animals would be easily identified but they aren't saying what it was that killed the boy. A bear or mountain lion are the only two animals I know of that could kill a human and have the strength to drag him 100 yards up a rain-slick mountainside. But it wasn't a bear or mountain lion, coroner said canine creature killed him. Authorities are asking neighbors to be hyper-vigilant of their surroundings. Google 13-year-old boy killed by animal attack KY. The story will most likely fade to black with no official ID of the animal or creature that killed him. Copy and pasted from a Facebook post. A young boy was killed here less than an hour from me. They keep saying canine creature but no one knows for sure. It's rained near continuously so the terrain is so muddy it would be almost impossible to climb up a mountainside that he was found deceased on. Canine creature cannot be located. It was thought that it was a pack of dogs or pack of coyotes but neither pack has been located. Twenty twenty two dog man sighting. Hey everybody, just discovered this subreddit and I'd like to share an encounter I had in 2005 or 2006. I was 10 or 11 years old at the time, and it happened on my grandparents' property, out in the country near Denmark, which is southeast of Green Bay. The land out there is a lot of farm land, with patches of woods. My grandparents own a few acres of land. And on the far right corner of their yard there's a thick patch of woods and swamp that goes on for a bit before hitting another farm field. I was standing on the back deck, shooting cans with my BB gun. It was a hot and muggy morning in July, and all morning outside I just had a really eerie feeling that I couldn't shake. It was like I was being watched but every time I'd look around the yard I never saw anything. I just kept going back to shooting cans when I felt the feeling again. I started scanning the tree line of the woods this time and that's when I saw it. It was standing next to a tree, and it was absolutely massive. When I got older I went back to that tree and tried to get an estimate on the height, I'd say it was 7 to 7 and a half feet tall. The only way I can compare the body is to that of Arnold Schwarzenegger's, it's unreal how big its shoulders arms and chest were. It was covered in gray fur, that was really shaggy and thick on its shoulders and down part of its body. I know when people describe dogmen, you hear a lot of it looked like a timber wolf standing on two legs, or it had the head of a German shepherd, this was not that at all. The head and face looked like a werewolf. It had pointed ears on top of its head, its eyes were yellow and almost seemed to glow even in the daylight and it was snarling with its lips open and it almost seemed to be smiling. The look and smile on this thing's face was pure evil, sinister is the only way I can describe it. I don't recall if it had a tail or not, and I feel like the legs looked like that of a human's and not bent like a dog's, however I was mostly looking at the head slash body. After what had to be only about 10 seconds but it felt like hours, without warning it broke eye contact with me, and took off sprinting to its right. It went through some really thick brush, emerged farther down the tree line, and took off into the woods. The thing is, no person could clear what it cleared in the time that it did. It was seconds that it ran probably a good 50 to 60 yards, and it was all thick brush through there. Being absolutely terrified, 
I went back in the house and didn't go outside the rest of the day. Funnily enough, my aunt came up to me later and said, I heard some strange things outside last night. I've been meaning to tell you but I didn't want to freak you out. I didn't tell her what I saw thinking she'd think I was crazy or making it up, but I insisted she tell me. She said she heard a loud growling and snarling walking around the house the previous night, unlike anything she's ever heard before. I still visit my grandparents quite often and haven't seen anything since. I haven't heard of any other reports from the area, but I know there was a Bigfoot road crossing just down the road back in the 60s or 70s. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.